Hey kids, Grandpa here. How you guys doing today? Doing a little bit different style video today. I'm going to do a little uh, multimedia presentation for you. Some of my thinking. You can see the inside of the garage here. Let me get down, down, down. You can see some of the interior of the garage here where I'm staying. But let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. What I'm going to start with is I'm going to start by showing you uh, my budget. This is... Uh, my perceived budget out on the boat. Now, we all know that this is just a whim and a prayer, uh, but you got to start someplace. And here's the thing. If I'm on a boat and I stay out of marinas and I'm on anchor, um, you know, this is basically my expenses. I have my cell phone I have to pay for. Um, I have uh, groceries that I'm going to need to get, and I have a fairly high figure there because, of course, I'm going to be doing a lot of initial stocking on the boat, toilet paper, paper towels, all of that kind of stuff initially. So um, I don't really have a handle on fuel costs. Um, I know I'm going to be motoring a lot and very quickly the first five, six, seven days, um, like 10 hours a day. So I'm going to be burning somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, uh, probably 10 gallons of diesel a day for the first five days. So um, I'm probably going to actually exceed my fuel budget the first month. Because, of course, if I go 10 gallons, that's 30 bucks a day times five days. That's 150 bucks in fuel right there. So my first month's going to be more than that. Later on, it'll be less than that. Well, I don't know yet. I, I don't know what that figure is going to be exactly. But I had to plug in something. Uh, you know, miscellaneous and clothing and whatever little items you're going to have along the way. And then I have a hundred, I have a hundred dollars here for miscellaneous unplanned repairs. Um, and I put it or boat payment. I'm not going to have a boat payment now. So, um, but you know, so there's my budget, you know, $883 a month. Um, now there'll be other expenses unforeseen coming up, but this is my starting point. Now, initially on on Lily, on the, on the Lily 2, let me clarify, not on the dog, on the Lily 2, the boat, uh, there's some things I'm going to need almost initially. I'm going to need some uh, source of power. Uh, the refrigeration on the boat is only uh, a 110 volt refrigeration. So I'm going to need to have some means of generating power on board immediately. Uh, especially for running electronics, charging batteries for cameras and equipment, laptops, that kind of stuff. Uh, I found on Walmart a, uh, a pretty decent um, little generator. There you go. This little dude here. That one right there. Uh, $249. It's 2,000 watts. Uh, 105 cc gasoline power. It's got an inverter. Uh, should, should work just fine. Okay. Next thing I'm going to look at is, uh, possibly adding some solar panels and a charger. And again, you know, we can just go, uh, right over here and be looking at these, uh, this sort of a setup, a flexible hundred watt panel with a solar charger for 155 bucks. Um, I think I might be able to get two panels and a controller for about 250 bucks or so. So that's something to uh, consider. Um, I need to be able to cook on the boat. Now, the boat had an alcohol stove on it, but the guy kind of took that out. So I'm going to have to look at that. Uh, I'm going to need some way of inverting power uh, so that when I'm working off the batteries, I have an inverter back up to 110, so maybe I can plug in my laptop and work for a little while. I've got to work some of these details out. A lot of what I'm going to be doing is going to be uh, propane based. If I buy a camp stove, it's going to probably be, you know, a little propane bottle Coleman's type stove. I have a little Coleman stove or a little Coleman bottle heater, little Mr. Buddy heater for heating the cabin uh, inside the boat. Because, of course, it's going to be kind of cold this time of year. Um, I need to rig some sort of a building ladder. I need to get a built boarding ladder made uh, or uh, welded or something to attach to the back of this. Uh, I don't care if it's ugly looking, really. I just need something heavy duty enough to get my fat butt back in the boat should I go swimming. 
I need to pick up a dinghy and an outboard. Now, typically, I put in here $300. That's going to change, guys, because I uh, found a boat, and I'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, but for right now, I just have that in here as $300. If nothing else, that's a cushion for some of these other expenses. And then I need some miscellaneous lumber and stuff. I'm going to need to build a box to put a bucket in for a temporary uh, composting head. We'll just put it that way. That's the friendly way of saying it. Uh, and I also need to build a cradle for the mast and the boom and stuff so they can be up on deck um, while I'm motoring down the canals and stuff. So, so after I sell my boat, I figure I'll end up with about 6,500 bucks. I'm paying $2,000 to buy the boat. I've already given them a $300 deposit. Um, I'm going to look at buying a dinghy and outboard. I, I know I have that listed here and here. It's redundant. I, I just did left it that way to leave a little cash on board. But this dinghy with the outboard here, let me show that to you real quick. Uh, yada, yada, where is it? Here it is. This guy is selling this 3.3 horsepower Mercury outboard with this air floor roll up dinghy. Um, and I can buy the pair of them. They're just a couple years old, but in really good shape. He said there's only about 30 hours on it. Uh, I can buy both of them for 750 bucks. So that's something, uh, I'm really giving some serious consideration to. I, I'm trying to work it out. The guy's a bit of a butt. He's not being very cooperative. Um, but we'll try to work that out. So, and then I've got a bunch of miscellaneous items that I need to do to outfit the boat. That's all this stuff here. So, you know, buying the boat, putting the dinghy in the outboard, all these miscellaneous items here. Again, with the redundancy on the dinghy. Um, takes my monthly budget and it's going to leave me a net of about $2,400. Which at $833 a month, which is my living expense budget, lasts me just about three just about three months. And if I take, you know, if I take that figure out, then that, uh, that helps a little bit. And, uh, you know, it gets me a little bit more than 90 days. Gets me a little bit more than 90 days. So, so where do you go from there? You know, I, I've, I'm going to have enough money to last me 90 days. And you and I both know that you can zap through that in a heartbeat. Um, I've got some overages estimated in the cost of groceries, uh, and some other things, but you know, there's a, there's a skillion other expenses coming up that I'm not going to be anticipating, um, that I'm going to have to address. So we'll work on that. But in the meantime, so I'm looking at buying this outboard here. I'm looking at picking up a generator or something like this thing here. I'm looking at picking up these sorts of, uh, solar panels, something like that, that I can just, you know, lash to the deck for the time being. Um, Thinking about buying a regular Coleman two burner stove, something like this for 43 bucks. Um, and then working on those, uh, you know, uh, little one pound bottles. I did find uh, online, uh, and I knew that they existed. I did find online that I could buy like a larger, like a 20 pound bottle. And then I can buy an adapter so that I can fill from the 20 pound bottle into the one pound bottles. And I really like that idea. I don't like the idea of buying those one pound bottles, using them once and tossing them. I mean, that's just a ridiculous amount of waste. But if I could have like a, a large 20 pound bottle that I can keep up on the deck someplace so that if it leaks, it leaks off the boat. Um, then I could have the ability of, of transferring that gas into the smaller cans so I could use for heat inside the cabin and to run the cook stove. Uh, and the grill. There's a grill that the guy's giving me along with the boat's going to go up on the back rail. And so that will attach there. Um, and then some of that $100 I had for miscellaneous material, I'm going to try to buy some hose clamps and some and some PVC pipe to make for some, uh, some poor man's rod holders <laughs> so I can put rods out behind the boat while fishing. Hey, going across Lake Erie, I, I, you know I'm going to drop lines across and I'm going to need places to, to stick some rods around the boat. So... That just seems like it made sense to go ahead and do that. All right. So uh, I'm also looking at batteries. I got to put new batteries in the boat. So I'm thinking about something like these. So I'm going to have a couple hundred bucks in batteries in there as well. 
And uh, I don't know what kind of condition the lines are. I might go to Lowe's and pick up uh, a, a roll or two of this uh, half inch line. And, um, you know, that way I can convert that half inch line and I could use it for like dock lines and stuff. Although the guys tells me there's plenty of lines and stuff in the lockers and stuff. I just I really got to get back on the boat, which I'll do tomorrow. Drag all that stuff out, sort it out, see what kind of condition it is, throw out the junk clean up the good stuff and then take an inventory and really figure out from there what else I need to fix up or replace because lo rope's expensive, man. I mean, rope is spendy. I just was online looking at things like replacing a halyard or something. And, uh, man, you know, at, at a dollar 89 or $2 a foot, um, to replace the, to replace all of the running rigging, all the lines on the boat, all the, the spinnaker halyards and the mainsail uh, halyards and the, the sheets and all that stuff to replace all that on the boat as it's specced out on their manual, which I got online and printed out the Cal, the Cal uh, 229 uh, owner's manual. Um, anyhow, it'd be like $650 to buy all high quality rope to replace all that. So don't have that kind of spending money right now, but uh, we'll see. So something to be looking at. Anyhow, on to the plans and the fun stuff. Well, first of all, okay, so here's uh, Google Earth. Here's where the boat is. It's in Sandusky. The dinghy that I'm trying to buy is in Flint, Michigan. So it's like up here someplace or up here someplace. I don't really know where Flint. Oh, there's Flint. So it's just south of Flint. So he's right in this area here somewhere. So I'm going to see if Rhonda could give me a, dry, a ride up there and back to pick that up. Um, maybe on the first or so, if the guy still has it. I'm trying to get a deposit to the guy, and he's being a jerk. He won't take a deposit. He just, well, whoever comes and pays me first. Oh, yeah, well. If I don't get it, I don't get it. I'll work out something else for a dinghy. But anyhow, so here's the boat. Let me zoom in on that. Here's the boat in Sandusky, Ohio. It's, uh, to give you guys an idea, this is Cedar Point, the amusement park right there. So it's uh, very close there in Sandusky, Ohio. It is at the Deepwater Marina. That's the, the Deepwater Marina right there. Um, <clears throat> there's a uh, little... Another marina here, and a ferryman's terminal, and another marina over here. There's just a lot of marinas here. One thing I found, though, is very convenient, and that is, where is it? No, that's not it. Right there. There it is. Right there. That building, is that, is that the right? Oh, it's not lit up now. That building right there is West Marine. I can a half a mile walk over to the West Marine store. So even if I don't have a vehicle, I'll be able to just walk over to West Marine and pick up stuff. So what I'm thinking about doing is I'm going to head out here, head out onto Lake Erie. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to head out and head east. Now, my first stop, I think, is going to be over into uh, uh, over to Cleveland, which is here, which is about 50 miles. Now, I should be able to do that in about 10 hours running time. So I'm hoping if I got out and left Sandusky really early that morning, whatever morning I leave, I can make Cleveland in the afternoon sometime and get in there and find some place to, uh, to, to anchor off. Now, there's a lot of places to stop. I could stop at Huron, Vermilion, Lorraine, Avon Lake, Lake. There's a number of spots here that I could pull into if I need to. In fact, over here by, by Lorraine, there's a good working boat yard. So if I need to, I can poke into one of these places should I need to. Um, but anyhow, I figure the first night I'm going to aim for going over here to Cleveland and uh, Cleveland's got some interesting things going on around the waterway. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar too much with Cleveland. But one of the places I was thinking about, I might try to get in here. And I might even spend a night, see if I can't tie up at this marina for the night. And the reason why I'm saying that is two things. One, 
There's a really cool uh, Great Lakes Science Center here, which might be interesting to see. But more importantly, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is right there. There's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in, in uh, um, uh, Cleveland, in Cleveland, in the Mistake on the Lake. So that might be fun to do. I don't know if I want to spend the night here, considering that's the airport, but uh, might be a little noisy with jets coming and going. But anyhow, so that would be the first night. Let me just back out here a little bit so we can get some more scale to this. Uh, there we go. So the first night I was thinking about going over to Cleveland. I might spend two nights there if I can get in and see the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and stuff. It's not too bad. Uh, the next jump is going to be coming around and to uh, Ashtabula, which is about here. Uh, but there's a nice place there to anchor. So I might spend a night in Ashtabula. Then over to Erie. So let's see. This is second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth night. There's a spot place to stop here and then up into Buffalo. Uh, at least that's kind of the plan. Uh, no fixed schedule. I'm not promising I'm going to be any place at any particular time. But that's the basic gist in the direction that I want to go in. Now, once I get into Buffalo, you follow the river like you're heading up to Lake Ontario. You, 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 follow this, whoop, you follow this river up and you get to right about in here somewhere. I don't remember where it is off the top of my head. And you hook up into the Erie Canal. And then you jump into the Erie Canal, which I think is that squiggly line there. I think that squiggly line is the Erie Canal. So you get on the Erie Canal, and that takes me clear across um, all of New York State. And there's lots of things to see and do. So the Erie Canal would come along here, um, drops down. These are the Finger Lakes. It runs actually north of the Finger Lakes. Um, this is the Oswego Canal coming down here past Fulton. So it meets the Oswego Canal about right here. Then you drop into uh, this lake. We come out of that lake past Utica on all the way over to Troy, New York, which is about here. This is about where Troy, New York is. And then from there, we get onto the Hudson River and we follow the Hudson River south to New York City. Yep, to New York City. And then from there, I'm going to go up through Hellgate, which is this narrow channel here over on the East River, and up into this spot here, which is called Manhasset Bay. And that is where I used to live. My, uh, my our house was right about there in Sands Point. That's where I learned to sail was in there. I did a lot of motorboating and stuff all over this area. Took my little 16-foot 16 uh, MFG fiberglass boat with a 50 horsepower Mercury motor that was as old as I was, a 16, 17 year old motor at the time. And we ran all over this area. Hell, I went all the way out in Montauk. We even went off South Shore off to the canyon and stuff. We had a hell of a time. So while I'm there, I'm going to invite my sister to come up and visit me. She's from Elm or Brentwood, which is about over here. She can drive over and go meet me. I don't know if I'm going to take the boat around Long Island or just hang out there, maybe go back through Hellgate then to head south. But spend some time certainly there in, in New York. So the only real plan that I'm going to have then is going to be Lake Erie over to Buffalo. Buffalo onto the Erie Canal, which kind of moves along that route there. Uh, the, the New York through, I think that is. Follows that over to uh, Troy and then down the river to New York City. And... Uh, if I'm doing things right, I'll hopefully get to New York City sometime around August. Um, might be nice for my birthday to hit New York City uh, August 11th for my birthday. So anyhow, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I don't know how well all of that's going to work out or just how ridiculous or crazy that may be. But um, that's sort of the plan du jour right now. That's my spending budget. I'm going to be broker than broke. I will have, hopefully by the time all is said and done, I'll have about 90 days worth of, of spending money, of budget money left to me for a very austere budget. 
Um, and then, you know, it's up to me. I've been blowing out my butt about how my channel is going to be so much different than anybody else on YouTube. And, um, you know, and it's going to be. Uh, now it's going to be up to me to put the proof to the pudding and actually create the content and uh, be able to, to grow it as it needs to grow. So we shall see, guys. I'll have... I'll have 90 days to at least get it to the point where it can cover my $830 a month budget. But, you know, hey, really, I mean, realistically, and I've been looking at this for a long time. Now, there are lots of ways to spend money while you're out boating. You go from marina to marina. Well, across Lake Erie, yeah, there's places there they're going to want you to dock. There's really not much in the way of anchorages. But once you're in the canal system, there's all kinds of free places to tie up or to anchor out. All kinds of places. Um, and even in all those places that I pointed out going across Lake Erie, uh, there's, a, you know, there's a lot of spots where I can get in and get out of the wind and the waves. You know, got off the big lake and run up a little river or something in different places, channels. I've only got a five-foot draft, so it won't be too bad. Uh, but I could pull up in spots and get out of the, the main weather and, you know, hole up there for a day or two if I need to, waiting for weather patterns to come and go for a week or whatever is necessary. So, uh, and in the canal, there's a lot of places. The point is, so there's no marina fees. Uh, I'm going to have my fuel costs. Now, you know, five days of 50 miles a day, yeah, I'm going to burn through a lot of fuel, but that's just the distances between those spots to go to. So, Pretty much what I have to do is I have to do five 10-hour runs in a row. But at least, you know, every night I'll have the hook down and I'll be on anchor someplace. I'm not going to have to make any two-day, three-day passages. I could, you know, I really could if I wanted to. Um, you know, there's there's uh, uh, people kind of coming out of the woodwork wanting to go with me for a part of the trip. So uh, I guess I could have somebody jump in. But... Um, it's not absolutely necessary. So um, if I had people on board and the extra crew, I might consider doing a two-day pass or something. So I don't know. I don't know. We will see what it is and what happens, guys. So listen, I'm going to go ahead and end this here. I just thought you guys might find all that interesting. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how it all pans out. So anyhow, that's it from here, guys. We'll have more for you later. You guys be good and be careful. We'll talk to you then. Bye.